You and her, you got a hot date after this or something? No, I'm just, you know, just saying it's five o'clock. Right, yeah. <laughs> You may see which one of these is Zoom. It's what? It's Zoom. Zoom. I may have to bring back my computer to my screen where I can see it. I'm trying to make it bigger for y'all. But I can't see it to make it bigger. Oh, I see what you're saying. Back on the screen. <laughs> oh, hey, well, now I can see it. There it is. Thank you, buddy. That's helping us. I know, but I can make it bigger and take it back. But when I have it over there, I can't see to make it bigger. <laughs> Uh, I got all these critics. Yeah, right here. Why didn't you do that? There we go. Yeah, that's, that's For y'all's information, it's like Zoom is right down here at the bottom. Okay. Good evening. I call to order the uh, Mount Eagle City Council meeting, March 25th, 2024. We'll start with the prayer by our chaplain. You would pray with me. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. May we find that peace not only within ourselves, but also within our world, our country, our state, and our town. Give our leaders, especially the mayor and aldermen, the wisdom, the patience, and the courage to make the decisions you would have them make. We also lift up to you all first responders, especially Monego Fire and Rescue, Monego Law Enforcement, and our EMTs. It is in the Lord Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me. Go ahead. Join me in the pledge, Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Mayor, if I may have just a moment, please, while I'm up here. I, I want to comment, if I could, on... Uh, the fire department. I don't. I don't know if you all understand how our fire department operates, but we are extraordinarily uh, fortunate to have Chief Travis as our chief. First of all and all the folks that are on the fire department because these people work really really hard i'm the chaplain for the fire department so i'm not just making this up i'm around them, I'm around them. they work real hard they train real hard and let me tell you what else they do periodically throughout the year they have fundraisers to raise money for the fire fireman's fund or fire hall fund that they basically use to make that uh, a more that environment a more livable, comfortable space. So in spite of all the other stuff they do, they go out of their way and they work hard to do these things. Yesterday they had um, um, Easter photo um, fundraiser that I was there for a little while. It was a lot of fun and they raised a little bit of money. 
I want to encourage all of you all and for you all to go out and encourage everyone else to please go and support them just as they support us every single day. Believe me, when you call 911 and, and it's a fire, they're there. If you need the police, they're there. We need to support them. That's all I'm going to say. You're here. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Roll the poll vote. And I'm sorry, the poll call attendance. Dorian. Here. Jessica. Here. Diane. Here. Dave. Here. Diane. Here. You have before you the minutes of the previous meetings. Is there a motion to accept the minutes as submitted? I'll make that motion. Thank I'll you. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Is there any additions or corrections? We're doing the uh, public meeting and the Next regular meeting minutes at the same time? Yes. Are there any additions or corrections to the public hearing or the city meeting minutes of last month? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minister approved is submitted. Um, citizens' comments. Anyone wish to be heard at this time? Thank you. So it's up to me. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome the uh, new executive director of the Mount Eagle Sunday School Assembly. Uh, Scott Parrish is retiring. I don't think you're stepping down. I think you're retiring, right? Retiring. <laughs> March 31st or whatever. And uh, Steve Williams will be taking over. So Steve, welcome to Mount Eagle and welcome to our meetings. Uh, let me jump ahead to- with Hey, we can hear you back here. Is this any better? No? Yeah. Let me turn it up. <laughs> Keep talking. How does that sound? Anything? A little better? Yes. Oh, I should fall into the microphone. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, for those that missed it, Steve Williams is our new executive director at the Mount Eagle Sunday School Assembly starting April 1st, I believe. Yes. So again, welcome. Um, the Easter egg hunt, as you all know by now, has been, uh, will be held March 30th, this upcoming Saturday. Planning Commission meets April 2nd, and the next Mayor and Alderman meeting is April 29th. So I did that. Uh, there are a couple of things that go along with what uh, Hulk had mentioned, and that's volunteerism. You'll be hearing from one or two committees tonight that either we have volunteers to do projects and want to do projects or we don't and therefore we won't do projects. Uh, one will be from Ty Burnett talking about parks and recs and baseball teams or any teams or any projects that we want the Recreation and Park Committee to do. I will be looking for volunteers if we get involved with Wreaths Across America, which is a function held in December for all departed military members, their families will buy a wreath and put it on their grave site. And that's a national project, Wreaths Across America. But it'll take volunteers. It'll take volunteers, as Polk had outlined, that the fire department and police department and those that do volunteer can help the town greatly. So I mentioned it. You all know what I'm talking about. Volunteering sometimes, according to some groups, is a dying art. But um, we don't want that in Mount Eagle. If you can help and you're interested in the project, then please reach out. The other thing I want to touch on, <coughs> because there seems to be some confusion, is the water rates and charges. As I have said in the past, this is for what they call the Enterprise Fund only. And the Enterprise Fund is only water and sewer. So the income in that account, not the general fund, the income of water and sewer has to meet the expenses of the water and sewer departments, regardless of the balance in the checkbook of the enterprise fund. So theoretically, you could have $100,000 in the checking account that has nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operations of income equal or covering expenses 
in the enterprise fund. Strictly enterprise fund, strictly water and sewer, strictly income has to cover expenses. And that's why we've done what we've done in the past. Um, just to give you an idea of some of the expenses, there are basin walls at the water plant that have to be addressed. We're getting prices, we'll be doing engineering that is not covered by a grant. So if it's capitalized or not, that's something that only the enterprise fund can deal with. Uh, cost of supplies is increasing, machinery repairs is increasing, uh, water samples and testing and reported to uh, TDEC is an ongoing situation. Some of the tests are costing a few dollars more. So as these expenses increase, the income has to match that. So I just wanted you, to, again, to be aware of, nobody's wild about increasing anything, but sometimes if you're mandated by the state, as TDEC has done with the Enterprise Fund, then we have to comply. So I just want to get that out there. Um, jumping ahead to reports, there's no report from Travis Wilson, John Condra, or Keith Butner. The only thing we can talk about right now in water and sewer is our I and I project. The aldermen will be meeting this month, or well, next month, to review the uh, engineering and the costs and the pre-bid conference and all of those factors that are related to uh, sealed bids to do continue with the I and I work. I and I, as you know, is inflow and infiltration. That's where the storm water is getting into the sewer plant and the plant has to treat more water than it should. So when that project is completed or significantly worked on, we should have um, increased capacity at the plant as well as more efficient system for storm water. So I'm just trying to give you things as they come up. It's been a busy several weeks since our last meeting, trying to do things to get ready for the new budget, which starts our fiscal year July 1st as well as whatever else we can deal with that comes up. So just to be aware, and again, if there are any questions, people say, well, this one asked me and that one asked, I'm here, you can ask me too, and that'll be one question one time. Uh, for those of you that know me, I do not feed the rumor mill. I don't know what people think or say. Uh, I can only go by official reports that are given to me by the proper authorities. So that's my comments on the rumor mill. Let's start with uh, committees and departments, police department. Good afternoon, Alderman Mayor. Good afternoon. I'm going to go down the list here and then I just got a few things to, to say afterwards. Um, very simple. We got public intoxication. We had one, um, we had one aggravated assaults one simple assault, one domestic assault. Um, we had one burglary, not of a home, but of a, uh, a storage facility. Uh, we had um, three drug-related arrests, um, 16 citations written, 249 calls. We had 17 vehicle crashes, none of which were um, severe. However, they're going up um, and they're gonna go up with people traveling. So uh, those are the numbers there. Um, I know that everyone has seen, heard about a missing individual. Um, he has been found, obviously. Uh, I know you guys have read the newspapers. Um, uh, he took his own life, um, which is unfortunate. So which, you know, leads into the segue into the next thing. Uh, depression, big thing. So if you, if you guys know of or have family members that are you know, fighting depression, um, don't push it aside um, because it's, it's a real thing. Um, now, the other thing as far as police matters go, um, taking several reports of uh, individuals on fixed income that are being taken advantage of people that are calling them up and saying that, um, hey, we're the IRS and you have to send me X amount of dollars. The IRS will never call you at your home. They will send you a letter or they will send an auditor to your home. Uh, but they'll never call you and say, you gotta pay this much money. Uh, it's a scam. So if you if you have um, loved ones that are on fixed income or whatever, just please let them know um, it is a scam. Um, there is another one um, that's going out, Publishers Clearinghouse. Hey, you've won a million dollars, but you gotta pay me 4,000. If you have to pay to get money, 
it's not real. So unfortunately, um, we do have those individuals out there that do get, you know, taken advantage of. And unfortunately, from the police aspect, there's really nothing we can do. Uh, I can take the report, I can send it up the chain to the TBI or whatnot, but it really doesn't go far from there because most of these are um, overseas transactions that are done. So just be mindful of that. Um, and the last thing is going to start getting prettier outside. Please slow down. We're going to have an uh, um, influx of walkers, visitors, people on the trails. So just uh, watch your speeds, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the alderman on the police report? Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Fire department. Good evening. We had 21 emergency calls for the month of March. The department has the, the department hosted the annual state uh, certification extrication class over the last week, last weekend. That's what the junk vehicles are sitting by the fire hall for. The ordinance officer is probably going to give us a ticket. Um, on this extrication class, we achieved five new members and we also done four research. That brings the total to 11 members certified in extrication for the department. Um, if we're, we're trying to extend into an advanced class. That's the next thing. And then a confined space class and a trench class that we'll host in Mont Eagle too. So that's, that's a huge step forward that we haven't had. Um, we're waiting the decision of the ordinance for the fire recovery USA stuff. We're waiting to hear back from the legal side on that. That'll hopefully be able to help recoup some costs for us for the for the town and the department on stuff. Um, we're still working towards the Knox box system. So that Knox box system basically drives towards commercial entity. We've also worked with our gated communities too and talked uh, within the last month at a meeting. We had a town kind of a city hall style meeting for them. Um, there's nine gated communities in the city, you know, within our fire district, two of them being within, three of them being within city limits. So, you know, that, that Knox program, hopefully we'll go somewhere with it as we get into the spring weather and we're able to get out and visit the, the commercial businesses. On our gated communities, though, we've been working back and forth with quick entry methods and different things that, that to try to unify everybody and get us all on the same page for emergency response for police and fire as well as EMS and, and Sheriff's Department. So, I mean, there's a lot that's going into that program, a lot more than I anticipated. I figured it'd be a simple meeting and move on, but we're still stuck on it, so. Um, <clears throat> I've used about 10,000 gallons of water for the month. I don't know if anybody gave that number yet. On the building inspections report, any, I'll move on to the building side. There's been four inspections done for last month. There's three new permit applications that, that we've received wherever AJ went for the code side. Uh, codes enforcement, we've got one court appeal taking place on this next court case. Um, one commercial complaint is underway along with some uh, paperwork to be delivered about some fire damage in the previous commercial uh, building and got two state agencies working alongside of us for two public complaints as well. Any questions? Any questions for the alderman? I'm codes, ordinances, or fire? I have had a lot of people ask about the fire, the commercial fire yeah. building. Is it coming down? They're kind of back and forth on what their future endeavors with it is, but I do have paperwork or we're working on talking to them about cleaning it up. And it seems that they're kind of cleaning it up here and there, but it's going to work on some paperwork to push them to clean it up that next step and go ahead and get it out of the way so they can move on with what they decide to do in the future, whether that's Get rid of it, keep it, um, or sell it, whatever, whatever their choice is after that. Uh, the six months for cleanup was last month, and they that's when they started working on it. And I mean, that's just kind of so a slow that, process. That was just released <clears throat> six months ago, I spoke with the arson investigator. So, so last month, they just finally released the contents through insurance. So, that's when you see them pulling stuff out of it, and now we're back at another standstill. So this week, hopefully, we'll make contact with them and, and see what their plan is. Just so as long as they're down there doing something. <clears throat> well, I think we're out of time myself. I, I mean, I'll, I'd rather talk to them and let them know before I go public with all of it. But, I mean, we're, 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 we need to fix something up. We're getting into something else now. That building's not salvageable, is it? I don't know. I don't know the, the engineering side of it. I, I, I wouldn't assume. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. so much he did. Any other questions or comments? Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Oh, I do have a Go question. Ahead. I didn't know about your your events. Where where are you putting the information about that? I think they're putting on. I don't do Facebook, but oh. I think the department Facebook page. I think they're, they're putting stuff on the department Facebook page because they 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 done Easter pictures yesterday. They done Valentine's pictures. Um, Odds and ends that the guys put together to kind of mingle with the community, and it's so far been, been a success. So, is it Money Eagle Fire Department? Is that the Facebook page? Yep. Okay. Yep. I, I look at him because I don't know. I don't okay. do Facebook. <laughs> Money Eagle Money Eagle Fire Rescue is, okay. is the uh, or Money Eagle Fire Department is on the Facebook page. And I'm sure it's linked somewhere on the account page somewhere too. Do you put the training on there? The dates of your training? Uh, yeah. Well, there should be. And then after our training, we'll post pictures and. Kind of give a, a run up of what we've done on that training uh, education. There's video and pictures of the training on there as well. Somebody might kind of, feel sorry for you to do something. I know that. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I know education, I don't think mentioned, I had a lot of donations yes. that sound for dinners and lunches, breakfast, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that on that Facebook page, just well, that's what we, we thank everybody and let the community know what we're doing and, and give updates and then kind of post our fundraising events and stuff like that. Well, on the fundraiser event, just to, to clarify that, so we've got our general fund that we operate off of, that's, that's the town money, and the, there's a volunteer account that's on the side. So most of the extracurricular stuff goes for stuff like this, that the firemen actually, you know, they, they work to get what they're after, that goes in the volunteer account. So the, the money that the, the public's, you know, bringing us in is, is going to, you know, tools, equipment, something that they've wanted, that they asked for, that that you know we don't have to go through the town side to ask for it, but it's going to be a good cause for it. Yeah. Just one that third. Thank you. Martha Ann? Uh, may I suggest that those notices also be put on the uh, community, Money Eagle Community News uh, page? Sure. I'm not sure how many people are on your page. Sure. That's right. And y'all, anybody's welcome to stop. We do training every other Wednesday night. And the public's welcome to stop by and see us, interact with the guys, and, and see what we're into and what we're doing. Everybody's welcome. Mm -hmm. so, thank, thank you. Ty, Parks and Rec? Not much, except for I handed, um, I gave a result of the town hall meeting to all of the uh, council members. So hopefully we'll be compiling that into a recreation plan at some point. We uh, tried to have a recreation uh, committee meeting with some new members. Uh, that didn't that didn't go as well as we had hoped. So we'll we'll be trying that again. So uh, we'll we'll regroup. You want to come to the podium with my piece? Not really. <laughs> By the time I walk up there, I'll be done. Uh, <laughs> I gave you the results. I took a picture of and have them up here. Oh, okay, great. So we so we have those results. This was a. Uh, Although they may not be reasonable. Here we go. Uh, this was a part of a component of putting together a recreation plan. Uh, hopefully, the people frequently say, Why aren't you going after these grants? Well, this is part of it. Uh, we found it to be a rewarding process. And maybe what we'll find is if we don't have a, enough interest to, to, to form and have a recreation board, we may find that the process has been more valuable than we thought. So, uh, uh, we're, we will try again. If we have people that are interested in that, feel free to uh, get in touch with me. If you need to get in touch with me, I think they can help you with that at the City Hall. So uh, we'd be happy to have you. Seems like I was going to mention, uh, oh, baseball. So we do have baseball happening in my Eagle. It's kind of through a partnership with Tracy City, but you'll see some activity out at the ball field. Uh, one of the things that we kind of started with was the start to see that happening so some things happening at a ball field and that's happening you know we're not we're not playing professional baseball out there but we're doing something so any questions todd was this meeting that you said wasn't as well attended as you hoped was that something that happened after the recreation town hall yes, yes. so i didn't know about it how, how was so it everybody was took the survey there was a question on that survey that said hey would you like to be a part of the recreation committee and everybody that said that they wanted to be a part of that we uh, we invited them to that meeting. I thought I said yes. Mm -hmm. But you know what? 
I'll add your name to the list. And about you. <laughs> but I was kind of hoping to have some people besides sure. folks that were on the town council and me. Malcolm Gladwell will tell you that that's really hard. <laughs> but anyway, so we'll continue to try. Thanks. What age group? Uh, what age group? Yeah. Yeah, on the on the on the uh, baseball. I don't know what team, what age group it is that's practicing out there. Okay. So we're doing it three days a week. I know our 11 and 12 year olds are practicing out there, there 11 and, 12 and there's a girls slow pitch team, at least one team that practices before my son. So there are a couple of teams practicing out there and we're all rotating around because they're using the Tracy field too. And uh, the Tracy field has now got a, uh, they've got an indoor batting cage that they're just getting set up. So with the sort of, we have three locations, the money will field that field in the batting cage. Uh, okay. At the end of the last meeting, you didn't specify the next meeting date. Do you I did not. I don't. Okay. So I kind of want to poll the people who didn't show to see if maybe it might be a problem with uh, when we tried to have that meeting. Right. So, okay. Thank you. Okay. Martha Ann, do you have anything? Yes, sir. Okay. Any aldermen have anything um, for Parks and Rec? Okay. I don't know if this is part. The what? It, it, it would be more, more to you, I guess, Mayor. The uh, bingo group, it's it's developed pretty nicely. Yes. That bathroom's broken again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, Which I, one? The, the one by the light one? The handicap in the same The same broken again? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just lock the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we spend money to fix things and repair things and paint things and do the best we can. And then uh, we find that there's been some type of vandalism, intentional or unintentional. Uh, there's going to come a point where we're going to have to decide what to do with that building if people don't know how to take care of it. Because that's about the third or fourth time we'll need to do some work over there. Uh, Jessica and I'll take a look at that tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Kind of a shame when you fix things up and then someone destroys it. Uh, where are we? Let's do um, Greg, I guess you planning commit. Well, I'm sorry. Maybe you just need to mention again about the Easter egg hunt. Well, the Easter egg hunt is March 30th. It was canceled last mm -hmm. Saturday. It's this Saturday. As I did mention, in the planning commission meeting will be April 2nd, and the next mayor and alderman meeting will be April 29th. The Easter egg hunt is 11 o'clock behind this building. The park there is called Hannah Pickett Park. And uh, there will be hot dogs served to the children, the first 300 children. And then after that, there will be charges for adults. So, and the fire department is handling that completely. I, I have a question, Mayor. Just thinking about what's something that's come up now at least three times, I think, in tonight's meeting, which is how we learn about information. Is there a central place where um, people can, so whether it's Travis or, or, or Chief Rayline or, or Doreen or Jessica, or is there a central place where information can go that it'll be posted onto the website? Because uh, I'm just looking at the website calendar of events and everything here has already happened months right. ago. Um, so Right, I understand your question. The website is down. It will be repaired, I hope, Wednesday. Uh, we have someone that has, what they say, constructed the website, and then someone that has administrative duties to add to it. Those administrative duties have they've been happening, but it has not gotten technically to the website. So we're working on that. But on a bigger issue of communication, now that you bring it up, I was going to talk about it later, but communication, we had a meeting, and I think Marcy Dussel, uh did the Christmas fair. And she said, well, we did everything we could for communication. We did the website. We did another website. We did uh, Mount Eagle Community Bulletin Board website. Uh, Ivan Michelle Russell was very kind to put it on GCTV and I think some other Facebook pages. And she felt that she used just about every communication avenue possible. And what kind of hurt a little bit is somebody came to her after and said, oh, I didn't know you were having that. Well, this is why I say, tell your friends and neighbors. Um, I don't know where else to put it. Uh, we do use the website, but then people tell me, oh, I can't get on the website. Well, now they can't, but in the past, 
many people have. I mean, the website's so live. Know. The website's live. The information is not updated. So okay. when we get over that technical glitch, we can go back to using that. But we also have a town Facebook. Everyone loves Facebook, but nobody seems to get on it. So I, I don't know how to communicate. We don't have Channel 5 covering us with press conferences, so I don't know what to do. But it is out there, and people just have to, if they see it, tell your neighbor. Well, I'm wonder, Martha Ann. Um, Iva and I have talked about this uh, Google Groups email, and um, that way it would go to people's emails instead of them having to find it on Facebook or the website. Um, I haven't had time to work on it, and I know Iva hasn't either. But that's the goal that we had, was to create something similar to Sawani Classifieds, but for Monego Classifieds. Yes, and you had mentioned it when it's scheduled, and I can get the folks to work on it that know how to work on it. We'll add that to our list of communication systems. But yeah, you're right. And Swanee Classified seems to work for a lot of people in Swanee. There is a fee. I'm not wild about a fee, but if we need one for whatever it costs, we'll take a look at that. But I don't think we need a fee just to put something on Google Group. But we'll look into that as soon as we're ready to. Well, I, I wonder if if some of the issue can be overcome just with, with consistency. Like I had that same conversation with Marcy and, and I know I've, I've talk to other people who are who are struggling to try to try to find all the different sources and and I wonder if we've had a lot of conversation about where the information goes but simply I wonder if simply identifying a simple place for the information to get collected might not help because if we are consistently collecting the information in one place um, then and people know to expect the information there then I think it's going to be a lot easier to, to get the momentum that we need. So, it, it, well, we collect them, we collect information at City Hall and put it on these various avenues. Um, after that, I don't know what to do. I mean, a collection point we have, everything we get in City Hall, where we can attribute it to, of course, we put it on the various avenues. But after that, if people don't get on or look, then I, I don't know what to do. Well, I mean, I, I know as a as an alderman, I don't see these things that come into City Hall, so I don't know that they're occurring. They're on Facebook, um, they're on the website, they're on the, you know, any right. avenue you want to choose, it's probably there. So even if there were a place for, say, this City Council to, to know about all this information, that would be a step one, where I think that if the information was consistently and concisely put together, we might be able to to share it more effectively. I mean, I'm, I've been part of that Mon Eagle groups for ever since I've started it, and it, it's easy. We could just do two clicks, and it could be out there. But but you know, I, I don't know about the other aldermen, but I don't see that information that comes in. I see. Well, I'll be happy to work on it with you. Ty, did you have something? Oh, I was just I was going to suggest that maybe there'd be a centralized location where we bring all that and let us know that we have that here at City Hall. Maybe if somebody was interested in something, they might call City Hall to ask or stop by and ask. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure this, that it, it, this is completely incumbent upon, I and mean, I share the same frustration, but, it, but, but, but also the, the people who want the information have to ask for it or look for it or something. I mean, this, this I think this is a two way street. I mean, well, sit here and say, thank you. It is, and I didn't want to belabor the point, but. You got your surveys back, people that were interested, you personally sent an email to those people, and we still didn't have a big response. So sometimes the people have to step up too. <coughs> but true. we'll get into that as uh, I work with Nate on his collection point. Grant? Um, just real quick, Nate, I agree that probably a central location for this is, is the easiest, because some people are using Money Community News, some people are using other Facebook pages. I think it might be time, I don't, I don't want to, we put money out on on the table for anything, but it might be time to revamp the uh, the, the city's website. Um, I've I've been in and out of that website a bunch of times, and and I, it's hard to hard for me anyway to find some of the information. So if we revamp the website, certainly have the front page that that would have you know more accessible activities or what's going on, which would be city activities and all that. That may be the place then the central location that you could put a lot of this information, and people would know to go to that website instead of 
trying to fly, trying to fish around in, in Facebook and things like that. Well, that's what I tried to do, Grant. If you recall, on Mayor's memos, it was on the front page of the website with links as appropriate. I know the Chamber of Commerce is working on links for their businesses, so that's a good idea is to try to have that. But if somebody puts it on Mont Eagle Bulletin Board on their own, no, I don't know. And if they do do it, do I find them? Because they didn't come to City Hall. So there are issues to deal with. No, I'm not going to find them, of course not. But um, I think we need a system that people adhere to instead of saying, oh, I'll just put it on my Facebook or I'll just put it over here or there. So we have to get, I think, the public to buy into the central point. There, there, was, a, there was a time um, yeah. a couple of years ago when one of our former employees, and I don't remember who it was, had set up a town of Mont Eagle Google Calendar that was available on the website and all you had to do was follow it and all every town event was on that calendar. If if I knew that the events were occurring, I'm happy to keep that calendar populated because I use Google well, Calendar. This is anyway. something that we could work on. So um, that's why I say you and I will be talking about it and come up with a system. Thank you. Uh, Planning Commission did not meet uh, in March as there was nothing on the agenda. There will be some considerations in April uh, reclassifying C2 uses to C3 uh, and other items that uh, come up before the Planning Commission, but there will be a meeting uh, April 2nd, first Tuesday of April. Uh, Alderman report. Doreen, you have anything? No, sir. Jessica? No. Dan? No. Nate? Yeah, I just want to announce again, so the, the, the planning event that's happening with the American Institute of Architects uh, is going to be the 25th through the 27th. Um, most events will take place here at City Hall. The signature uh, time for community input is going to be on Thursday. Um, make sure I get everything right. I have I've handed out the wrong Please address do. before. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're on Thursday e evening. We're going to be having a, a community event here from 5 to 7:30. Uh, where we're going to feed people who show up. We're going to have small groups. Uh, we're going to have some live music. There's going to be a bouncy house for the kids. It's the opportunity for everybody in the community to come and give input on how they um, imagine and how they want to see Mount Eagle look in the future. Uh, we'll have, um, I think, five different tables along different themes of economic development and uh, downtown development, uh, land use planning, where uh, each and every citizen will have the opportunity to have their voice heard. Um, that happens on Thursday and then that Saturday, the 27th, there's going to be a presentation where they've taken all those ideas and turned it into a sketch of a, of a plan for the town. Um, this is, is really important as, as many of you who followed um, the town business and politics over time know, one of the issues that we've run into in land use planning over and over again is a lack of a general plan. And this is our attempt to try to get a general plan, to try to get everybody on the same page. And in order to do that, we're just gonna need a lot of community input. And so we're hoping the bouncy house for the kids and the, and the catered food is gonna bring folks out. Um, I encourage you to tell your friends about it and, and come be a part. Let us, tell us what you think. There you go. So tell your friends and neighbors again, and if they have any questions, they can contact either City Hall or Nate by email or whatever the system is, but we have to get the word out and all you faces look very familiar. So thank you for coming every month, but there's a whole bunch of folks out there that need to get the word. So you can help us with that project. When and where is the presentation? Uh, it'll be on Saturday at five o'clock here at City Hall. Okay, uh, thank you for that. There's no old business on the agenda. The new business, we have uh, business permits to decide on. The first one being Wonder Brew. You want to come up and tell us about Wonder Brew real quick? This is Haley Cross? Harley. Harley Cross, I'm sorry. See what happens when I don't have my glasses up? <laughs> Hi, um, so my name's Harley Cross. I run and operate Wonder Brew. We started in Mont Eagle actually as a mobile coffee trailer in 2023, May 13th to be exact and ran it through into December doing different events and things like that. We sat up mainly at Oaks and Oliver's Modern Mercantile whenever they moved over there. Um, we just opened our first location in Cowan in February and it's done really well so far. 
And I originally, because I live in Monteagle, was looking for a Monteagle location. And the first one I looked at didn't work out, which we were pretty upset about. Um, but I got a new a new location and we actually put the deposit down on Sunday and I started working on that. Um, the colorful building, the red, blue, and yellow one up the road that Eric is in. Um, we're going to move into there and get started on that. I was hoping to be open there around June 1st. Any questions for this girls? No. Make a great coffee shop. We'll thank you. I'll accept a motion to approve the business permit. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Is there discussion on that motion or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. You're all set. Thank you. Um, I still have the structure of it itself, but whenever I opened the Cowan location, I had to take everything out of it to move it into there. I'm hoping maybe sometime in the future I can put together another one to be able to do events like the yeah. caverns and such like that, like okay, I used to do. Fresh be starting pretty soon. Yes, I would love to still be able to participate in that. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is Black Creek Feed and Supply. This is on the Tracy Highway. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Jennifer Meeks. This is my husband, Jason Meeks. And um, we have secured uh, the location next to Summerfield Market. It used to be the small engine store, I believe. Um, so we've been in there um, looking at a few things uh, and hoping to get everything started and um, ready to go hopefully by May 1st. Um, so what we're looking at is to be able to sell feed, uh, medicines, um, other farm and animal supplies along with um, pet supplies um, in a small retail section for some apparel, um, you know, cute little chicken shirts, goat shirts, things like that, um, woodworking and other home goods. So some of the things that we would like to do um, are people up here on the mountain um, if they have a specialty, woodworking, um, you know, making shirts, making cups, things like that, we'd like to have a little section for suppliers in there um, and vendors where they can showcase their wares. Um, so that's what we're looking at. But of course, the main thing is up here, um, you know, the long way away uh, off the mountain, you can try to get feed and supplies up here. A lot of, um, you know, people, of course, need pet food. You've got Ace. Um, but we want to make certain that we're being competitive with them, and um, yeah, so that's what we want to do. Thank you. Alderman, any questions? Uh, bird seed. We will have bird seed. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll have bird seed. We'll have pig feed. Um, rabbit, anything, feed. rabbit feed. Yes. <laughs> so yes, we will have the gamut on everything. So. Maybe not at first. But. Maybe not at first, but we are we are working on it. We have actually had a couple of vendors um, come by and see the location. Uh, so we have got that in the works. Um, so yes. Maybe later, not up front. <laughs> and well, what are the days or hours of operation? Um, right now we're looking at um, Monday through Saturday. Um, Monday through Friday we'll more than likely be eight to five um, normal business hours and then Saturday we're thinking what we're we not nailed that down, down yet but That's we're fine. looking at um, you know opening maybe up a little bit later and being open a little bit later maybe nine to two something like that so and another addition that we're looking into is uh, bins so if you're working off the mountain or coming home you know you're not gonna make it to the store in time you can call ahead Place your order, we'll put it into a bin. The last four digits of your invoice number with the combination of the bin, you can still buy and pick stuff up. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. Do we have the application back? Mm -hmm. I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Here it is, right here. You do. I've already seen it. Fine. Did they see it? Yes, and that's that the building prior, but prior to uh, Summerville Market mm -hmm. as you're going toward Tracy City. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I move to approve. The Is there a second to the motion? Second. Any further discussion on the motion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda, as you know, we've been working with the entire parking area of this building and the library for seal coating and striping. You have two proposals. I've called other contractors and they do not do seal coating. They do asphalt only, which is churning it up and relaying bases and everything, which is in essence, many have said just over the phone without even looking in excess of 100,000. So uh, the proposals you have in front of you, uh, I would accept a motion to overseal and stripe the described area, and then we can have discussion on the motion. Is there a motion to accept? I'll make a motion we do that. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Is there discussion on the motion? Is, is this going to take those dips out of the parking lot? It'll take some of the dips out, um, but not 100%. Uh, it won't change drastically the elevation of the surface. That's where the asphalt churning and all of that would come up. What they had proposed and from various people, even those that aren't interested in this job, several coats may help to change it. Some channeling may help to change it. The biggest thing now is to protect the surface and that's what that seal coating and striping will do. Well, the striping, obviously. The seal coating would help to protect the surface where water doesn't get underneath and then when it freezes, you have spalling and breakup like we saw in the test section that they did. So. Okay, I got a question. This yeah. right construction is only for crack fill, seal coat, and restripe. The yes. dance is for the entire parking lot. Yes. Crack fill and parking. Which one are you looking at doing? Well, they're basically the same. It's a double application of the whole parking lot with seal coat and <coughs> crack fill. They're going to rake out the cracks and we seal those. But I mean, are you going with Nance or are you going with Wright? Well, that's what we're discussing. I I would personally go with um, Nance since they had done the test patch for us. They've been uh, coming up several times and they are somewhat cheaper than the other bid, so. Well, they're planning on doing the whole parking lot. They're, they're both, for the, both, parking both are for the whole parking lot. <laughs> both, of them are, both of them are for the whole parking lot. They're both? Yeah. First one doesn't say that. What what budget line is this coming from? They go it can come out of the road account as a uh, capital improvement. Okay, because the right does not say the whole parking lot. No, but the square footage is the same on both, which is the whole parking no. lot. Any further discussion on the motion? No. Um, uh, Ty has a has a question. Yes, I know, but I'm asking the old first. We have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion from the alderman? I have a general concern that that's a whole lot of money to basically paint a parking lot. Um, and if it's coming out of capital improvements. No, it's coming out of the road. So it's coming out of the 60,000 we budgeted for paving on roads this year? Yes. The one? 50,000. So which roads are not getting paid because of this? Well, roads, as you know, are in different counties. so each one would be looked at. If there's a severe road, let me know and we'll take a look at that because there'll be money left over anyway in this fiscal year. What Ty? Go ahead, let's see what Ty has said. Ty, did you have a question? I may not find this surprising at all. Uh, so do you have time to entertain another bit? That's the only question I'd like to give you some information. I'm sorry, do I? Do you have time? Are you willing to entertain another bid? I'd like to give you a contact. For another bid? Well, we'll see how this motion goes. I but mean, if you're not willing to entertain it, I'm not bothered. Well, do you feel it would be significantly less? No, it might be better quality work, but I doubt it would be less. Well, my point in this, since it hasn't been done in a long time, we did a test patch off to your left. And that seems to have sealed what was breaking up and cracking up. Now I think if we can move forward, we can do it again and recoat the entire parking area and restripe it with the white lines and the handicap and see where we go in the future. If you have a source, we could put more bids out. But right now, my concern is to do it this fiscal in this kind of weather and get the uh, parking lot coated. 
Any other discussion on the motion? Do we have the rest of that money from the roads budget allocated to other roads in the no. in, in the town? We don't. Okay. Well, we, we had talked about. I put together a roads list and shared it yes, with you. Yes, and, and I did that. We and were going over it with Keith uh, at a couple of times, and uh, myself personally. And there is nothing that we haven't patched yet. Another part of the roads is once we start the I and I work, we're going to be chopping up roads, and then we may need. Um, and this won't be this fiscal. But we'll need to start doing some road work there once they uh, chop up the roads for their I and I work. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Me personally, I would rather wait and not do this parking lot and do some roads in town. I feel the same way. But that's my whole point. The roads in towns, you'll do it and then you'll chop it up when you start doing the I and I work. Not if so we plan. Rather, not if we do roads that aren't scheduled for I and I work. How do we know that, Jim? Because we know where all the I and I work. Travis has given us two presentations. We know where all yes. the sewer work is going to happen. Yes, and there'll be other related work as well. Right. Well, as long as we've got the money in the account to do the paving, doesn't mean we have to do it before the I and I's studies. And well, that's that. my point. That's why I'd like to preserve the parking lot best we could with the sealed coat. Well, I'm a big fan of the crack ceiling uh, to preserve the parking lot, and that's well, $2,500 of the bid. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I, my experience with seal coating is it's cosmetic, but it doesn't do a whole lot to preserve the, the longevity of what's there. Well, what we found with the test patch is it did hold, it did work, and there was no separation or any of the cracking from underneath coming up. So we were satisfied with the test patch and thought that the next best step would be to reseal the entire parking area, which is not just this building, it's the library from that, behind the library, in front of the library, all the way over to the other side. It's the entire area. Well, I think we get a lot of traffic around City Hall. I think there's a lot of traffic in and out of the library, and I think uh, this would head, up, head off a lot of potholes being developed at times. We've got a bad place right out here that would really use uh, the seal coating would uh, seam it up pretty accurately for a good season of time. So well, that's expensive stuff. You can't, uh, anytime you're working with that kind of uh, material, especially in today's prices, it's expensive. So it's just part of what you have to do to, but, but this is a central part of the city. I think we ought to be mindful of how well it looks and how well we keep it. Which was quite frankly part of my thinking, Dan, thank you for that. As well as, yes, it is a traffic area, and yes, if we can preserve it and seal what has to be sealed, we're all satisfied with the uh, test patch. And uh, I, I don't see why we wouldn't preserve what we have instead of waiting till it falls apart and then wonder what's wrong. What would it take to take the dips out so that you don't have water sitting? In the you'd board? have to, as I understand it, you'd have to churn it up and do some asphalt board. You have to and pull cover it, it again and again. You have so, to dig it all up and then re re level it and probably two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's in excess of a hundred thousand yeah. everyone has told me without even looking at it. You can't you can't uh, you can't fix what's there cosmetically other than just keep it keep the water from going into it and that's what seal coating does. Any other discussion on the motion? Roll call vote please. No. Uh, Jessica? No. Uh, yes. Yes. No. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm happy to have, I think we should all sit down and have a conversation about how to how to allocate that money. And I think we well, can come we'll up with some that great ways. To, well, there'll be other things, but that's one way to allocate money is to fix something that needs fixing. Yeah, and so I think we I'm could do sure that, with some, that with some crack Thank ceiling. Thank you, yeah. Um, the next thing is on the list on the agenda is credit cards. What we have are two credit cards that are basically serving the community and I'm sorry, all the departments. Yeah, I'm sorry, all the departments. And what we're proposing, and I would accept a motion to do this, is to get a separate credit card for police, one for fire and one for utility because when an expense is reached, the card can't be used until a payment is made. So this would be a lot easier to track expenses per department 
and a lot easier to satisfy the limits that are required um, by having two cards as opposed to uh, per department. The other thing is that it is a little stricter on accountability because they would need certain guidelines to uh, use the card. They wouldn't just circulate it. It would be for the chief. So if there is a motion to do that, I would ask for a motion to authorize a credit card in the amount of $5,000 each for police, fire, and utility. The other thing you should know is more and more of what we're buying is buying online. Therefore, we need a credit card to do those purchases. And that's another issue that has brought this about. So is there a motion to do that? I'll make, I move to uh, allow for department heads to have their own credit cards. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Are you gonna have one for the administration here? Separate? I already have. We one. already have. So one. you'll keep that. Yes. Okay. Any other questions I, on the I would like to hear what Travis and since Chief's not here, but I'd like to hear what Travis has to say about it. Are you okay with it? I encourage it simply because number one, it's going to, I, I want to be held accountable for my purchases. I want to make a spreadsheet on a monthly basis and submit it for what I've done. And I got caught with my pants down. The fire truck broke down. The credit card was, was here and I was out in the field on a Saturday. So we had to wrangle some money up, the, up, up amongst members to go to a parts store in Manchester and Woodbury to get the parts that we needed for the fire truck. So, I mean, which isn't no big deal. I can submit reimbursement and then we'll take care of us the next business day. But I just think we're 2024, not 1980. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. Any other questions from the owner? Um, Mayor, we talked about this at the last budget year. I'd like to see our accounting move from a check register to a, a way that the aldermen and the department heads can see um, each charge by account code it's charged to. And this is a great way, these credit cards, I think is a great way to start that. Um, but I hope that we can, in the budget meetings, discuss that as well, because right now it's not, uh, it's not very clear to anybody what charges are being charged to what account and this is hopefully a step in the right direction to help us remedy that i'm sure it is are there any other comments discussion on this motion roll call Dory. yes uh, yes 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 okay that concludes the business of the uh, <coughs> meeting tonight i'll entertain a motion to adjourn i'll make a motion the second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good night.